What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.4 Beta 3 to registered developers about a week after the release of Beta 2. And for public beta testers, you guys should see this update very soon. Now, in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.4 Beta 3, tvOS 15.4 Beta 3, HomePod OS 15.4 Beta 3, WatchOS 8.5 Beta 3, and macOS Monterey 12.3. Beta 3. But in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and what's new in the software, along with when to expect the next beta and the final release. All right, so let's first take a look at the size of this update. And you can see here, Beta 3 came in at about 750 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max coming from Beta 2. So the size will vary, but if you're coming from Beta 2, it's likely going to be around this size. So if you're going to check out the build number, settings, general, about 15.4. The new build number is 19E5225G. And then if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see that is 1.59.00. All right, so now what's new here in 15.4 beta three? And the first thing I noticed after updating is that I did not get the cool hello screen after updating like I did in betas one and two. So that was a little bit interesting. Some people also got a prompt to update their emergency SOS settings. I did not get that. Now it also appears that you might be able to download iOS updates over LTE. So you can see some users are seeing this prompt right here that says use mobile data to download. If you leave Wi-Fi, you can continue downloading using mobile data. So that seems to be a new feature here in 15.4. It might be a bug, but before it was limited to just 5G. So before you were able to download iOS updates over 5G, but now phones that don't have 5G, only LTE, are getting a prompt to update iOS software over cellular, which is pretty interesting. We also get a new splash screen here in beta three for the podcast application. So you can see it shows filter episodes when viewing a show in your library, filter episodes by played, unplayed, downloaded, or saved. And then it also shows browse by season. Go to any show and filter for a specific season. We also have a few changes in the face ID and passcode settings related to mask ID. So the first one is actually when you're setting this up for the first time, you may get a prompt like this that says look down to unlock, but during the initial setup process. So when I first went to set this up and rescan my face, it actually grayed out the whole setup screen where it scanned your face and told me I needed to look down at the camera. So I'd never seen that before beta three, so I assume that is new. Also, when we go to add glasses, we could see that the verbiage has changed again right here. So before in beta two, it just said face ID up here. Now it reverted back to what it said in beta one. It says add glasses. So there's minor verbiage changes right there. And then also when we go down under attention and deselect the require attention for face ID, we could see some new text here inside of this alert. So it says, if you turn this off, Face ID will unlock your iPhone, even if your eyes are not clearly open and looking at the screen. Face ID will always require attention when you're wearing a mask. Inside of the stocks application, this was also in beta two, but I just noticed it here in beta three. The three dots right here pull up the contextual menu. That way you don't have to haptic press on the story right there. So that's the same thing we saw with the news application. It's also made its way over to the stocks application. And then there's also some additional changes found in the code by Steve Moser. So the first one is that Apple is working on a new notification prompt for the notes application. So you can see this is what it's gonna look like right there, pretty interesting. I was not able to reproduce that here on beta three on my device, but that is coming. Also, Apple is working on adding a sort by release date in the iOS music application and also a clear up next option. So I looked for those in here, but I was not able to find it. If you tap on these three dots, you can see there, I don't see anything about clearing the up next. And I also did not see a sort by release date, but it looks like that is coming. Apple also added more references to the tap to pay feature. So the API was added in beta two, but I'm not seeing anything physically new here in beta three, but there is some more code added related to tap to pay. This of course is the feature that's going to allow the iPhone 10 S and newer to accept credit card payments and other digital wallet payments via a simple tap on the phone no additional hardware necessary like a square reader or anything like that so that's going to be a big feature when it comes out and even more references were added here in beta 3. and it's the same deal for the digital driver's license the code is there more references were added but nothing is showing up new 
in this update. I didn't see anything in the wallet application or anything like that referring to digital driver's license. But again, it's only a matter of time before we see that. And of course, there are several other changes in the code with this update that Steve Moser found. You can see those on the screen right here, but you're really not going to see anything on your device itself. It's just in the code. Now, as far as bug fixes go, there's only one resolved issue in this update according to the release notes. So you can see it's a fix for adding an EU digital COVID certificate from France, Ireland, or Singapore. There were major issues before, just wouldn't work and made us one and two, but that has been resolved with this update. Also, if you were having the constant switching between LTE and 5G, that should be permanently fixed now. That was fixed in beta two, and it looks like it's not coming back for beta three, so that's good. Also, third-party apps have not crashed on me at all. Here in beta three, I've opened up every app I've had, and I've had no crashes, which is a good sign. And then also, some people are still having issues when printing from the Photos application, so that should work in beta three. I thought it was fixed for everybody in beta two, but apparently some people were still having issues. So if you were, try that on beta three, it should be resolved. And then as for remaining bugs, some people also were still having the iPhone storage bug where the storage just simply would not load up top no matter how long they waited. So I'm done trying to predict when it's going to actually be fixed because it's been fixed for me for a while now. And a lot of people said beta two fixed it, but some people also said it's still not fixed for them. So it's really hard to say. So you'll have to let me know in a comment down below if beta three fixes it for you specifically, but it seems to be on a case by case basis. It seems to be different for every person. Also the airplay to home pod feature still is not working every time. Sometimes I'll get an error saying that the connection timed out, even though I have no issues with my connection whatsoever. And it works on every other home pod except for one. So it seems to be an issue maybe with home pod OS, the betas, I'm not too sure, but hopefully that does get fixed. I will have to report back to you guys on that one. Also inside of our settings, we go to our iCloud settings and then to iCloud mail and custom email domain. You can see it still does not open. It just hangs there. It loads, but nothing opens up. So that's still a bug in beta three. And then the same goes for when we go to our settings, general background app refresh, and then all the way down to the bottom, you can see that web still does not have an icon. So that should show the Safari icon, but it still shows a blank icon right there. And of course, if you take a look at the release notes, you can see several bugs that are still known issues here in beta three that have yet to be resolved. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels great so far here with beta three. It feels a little bit smoother than beta two, but really not too much of a difference. If you go to the Geekbench scores right here, you can see we scored a 1742 on the single core and a 4871 on the multi-core. You can see slightly lower on the single core compared to beta two, slightly higher compared to beta two on the multi-core though. So of course that doesn't tell the full story. I would hope that it would be better in terms of performance, especially with apps crashing and lag and things like that. Hope it is better, but I will have to let you guys know in my follow-up video on Saturday. And then for battery life, battery life, you know, it hasn't been the best in betas one or two. So I am hoping it improves a little bit here with beta three. I will let you guys know, of course, in this weekend's follow-up as well. And also next week after using the phone for a little while and after using beta three on multiple devices for a little while. All right, so now what's next for Apple? So as predicted last week, we are now on a one week cycle for these iOS 15.5 four betas. So I would imagine beta four is coming next and it's looking like that's going to be on the 22nd or the 23rd. So the 21st is president's day. So I highly doubt we're going to get anything then. So the 22nd or the 23rd is when we should see iOS 15.4 beta four. And then after that, we're either going to get a beta five or an RC. And then of course we do have the Apple event most likely on March 8th. So that's when we're going to see either the RC or the final release of iOS 15.4. If it is the RC, that means the final is going to be out on the week of the 14th. I think regardless of what happens, the week of the 14th is going to be the very latest that we see iOS 15.4 released to the general public. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 15.4 beta three. I I will find more features and changes, of course, after using this for a little bit longer, and I will share those in my follow up video on Saturday. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that follow up video on Saturday. And also my coverage on iOS 15.4, the future betas, and of course, the final coming in early March. So anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.